About a year and a half ago, I was called into the Philharmonic Society offices and outgoing president, Dean Corey, sat me down and said, how would you like to perform Beethoven's Ninth Symphony? After I sort of fell off the chair, I said, sure. Not even thinking about that he was asking us to play Beethoven's Ninth. Beethoven Nine is one of the most challenging pieces in the literature, not only because of its difficulty, but because of the, just the magnitude of this piece of music. We've been around since 1970, and without a doubt, this May 15th Beethoven Nine project is the most important and largest concert we've had in our distinguished history. OCYSO is going to be joined in force by the Chapman Orchestra. The Orange County Youth Symphony has for many years been in residence at Chapman University through the Conservatory of Music. The concert is also going to be a collaboration with University of California, Irvine. UCI is contributing their choirs and Chapman University is also contributing two choirs and we have a massive chorus of over 180, I believe. We're also joined by four renowned vocalists that will be serving as our solo for the piece. We're now looking at 147 people, individuals, sitting on stage for the performance of this piece in addition to the 180 sitting behind us in the choir loft. So in total we're gonna have over 300 performers involved in this performance of Beethoven's Ninth. It is a massive performance. It's so intense and loud and interesting that like I expect like every single person to realize this is what classical music is all about screaming and yelling and like the timpani going crazy and like it's just so exciting at the end because like it's just gorgeous it's i don't know how to explain it there are a few people on this planet who don't know at least the O to joy element from, from Beethoven's Ninth, or the, the tune. They may not know that it comes from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, they may not realize that it's, you know, Beethoven wrote nine symphonies and, and all that stuff. That's not the point. The point is that very few people on this planet don't know this tune. And it's the national anthem of the European Union, for heaven's sakes. It's, it's, it's essentially the, what many people would call the holy grail uh, in Western classical music. It wasn't very often at the time that you would get a symphonic concert work that involved choir and used choir as, as an instrument or as a member of the orchestra. And I can't imagine what it must have been like to be sitting in a concert hall at that time and hearing this piece for the first time. Holy cow, what a piece, what a piece of music. The whole season had to be planned very, very carefully. We knew that obviously we were gearing up for this one performance. The Orange County Youth Symphony Orchestra is a full symphony orchestra made up of students ranging from eighth grade through college, though the largest percentage of our enrollment is the 17, 18 year old students. Every year, OCYSO re-auditions everybody um, for participation. No one is guaranteed a seat back. You know, you've, you've got to prove, you got to prove your mettle. You got to prove that you've got to be an OCYSO. You've got to have a, a, the ability, the maturity level to be an OCYSO. You also have to have the, uh, obviously the technical and music, musical proficiency. But it's kind of like taking a test where you study ahead of time and you do everything that you can up until that point where you have to prove you know what that you know and see if you got it. So it is a nerve-wracking experience. Yeah, I do have some nerves, especially playing in front of Maestro Walks. But um, I remember one time uh, Jay Fogle told me that if you're nervous, it's because you care. So, yeah. When you're at a concert, the audience doesn't usually have a clipboard with a pencil writing down every mistake you make. So an audition is the most stressful situation a musician has to go through. Uh, if you practice hard enough, you, you should be fine, you know, it, just don't stress out about it. 
which is hard to do. So we have to be careful on not to accept somebody who's going to drown. We want them to want them to swim. We want them to do well. And we've had sometimes parents who've probably said, I have a really, really, really talented seventh grader. We will certainly listen to them. We will certainly give you our advice. And if necessary, we'll we'll send them either to another organization who we think that they might do well, and we say, please come back when they're maybe a little bit ready in a year or so. It's not only about them being perfect on their instrument and being perfect in what they do. We're trying to give them also life skills and life lessons on how literally to play well with others. On a weekly basis at OCYSO, we rehearse from 2 to 5 p.m. at Chapman University. And traditionally, we have a full rehearsal, which we call a 2T rehearsal and that involves the entire orchestra, and we'll be working on anything for our December concert or our March concert, but most importantly this year, everything's been prepared leading up to May 15th. Yeah, so rehearsals, um, we have a regular rehearsal schedule, <laughs> and when I say regular, it often changes. <laughs> Extended rehearsals oftentimes, but rehearsals, depending on the week, sometimes we get to do sectionals, small groups, sometimes we're able to bring guest artists um, to work with the students. Rehearsals? I think there's a good balance of fun and work because we're working a lot really hard to get ready for the Beethoven concert, but at the same time, Mr. Schaefer, Mr. Vogel, and everyone really, they have this humorous side of them, which make it a perfect balance between work and, like, fun. Still, it takes a chunk out of your day because rehearsal's in the middle of your day. Get home by, like, 5.45, 6, and it's like, okay, I don't have a Sunday. Either you really want to go to rehearsal or you really don't. There's really no in-between. It's a lot of hard work, but, you know, it's necessary to do what we do. Sometimes I think we need more rehearsals. A lot of the time I think we need more rehearsals. In December we had our first concert and it was pretty amazing hearing us all together for the first time. It was the first opportunity that we had to hear our students performing together for the season. Every year we have a new group of students. Every orchestra is different every year and for me, very cool to hear the beginnings of Beethoven 9, which months later was going to turn into an enormous project. And then kind of back out. E, E, D, bum, 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 bum. So we hear that. Oboe is the same thing for you a measure later, four, four, five. It was the first chance for us, first of all, to be on a real stage. So it gave me a chance, and it gave the staff a chance, it gave everyone, and it gave the kids a chance to go, oh. This is how we need to balance. This is how we need to work. This is what we need to be listening for. I can say it until I'm blue in the face to a certain extent in a rehearsal situation, but once they're put on a stage, it's a very different situation. So playing as like a group for the first time was scary because it's like, okay, we're playing a really hard piece. It's really famous. With kids I don't even know, so I like don't know how they play. I don't like have that relationship with them yet and like trust that they're gonna do what they need to do. And it was weird and it was hard. And most of us bases had not we're not up to par on what we needed to be. So it was it was nerve wracking and it was scary. And back then we're like, oh, we did pretty good. And now like if you look back at it, you're like, mm, mm -mm, no, we did not do that good. There's a lot of kinks that still have to be worked out at that time. And, you know, it's our first chance to really bond like in the moment, you know, on stage. There's a sort of pressure that you don't get in rehearsal that you do get on stage. And so every time a group is on stage together, it kind of, uh, melds them together into one form, you know. It helps them be a more cohesive group, and uh, every time you have a concert, that adds a bit more to it. Part of our mission as an ensemble are these concerts for fifth graders. They ship in thousands of 10-year-olds into Segerstrom Hall. OCYSO has been very fortunate to have a long-standing partnership with the Philharmonic Society of Orange County, who presents the concerts for fifth graders. The first center concert of the season is always a crack up because students don't know how to get into the hall, they don't know where to park, they don't know where they're going, and it becomes this really stressful thing and then they walk in the hall and when they go to peek out on the stage or they go stand out on stage, um, any student who's new with us, all of a sudden they stop and it's like, oh. Looking out into the audience at Sigurdström is pretty um, spectacular because when you look up into the balcony it just goes on forever and it kind of some of the balconies are so high that you can barely even see it above the lighting and you just look up and you're like, wow, there's people up there. 
The opportunity that the OCYSO musicians have to play uh, the center concerts is really, I think, critical to the success of our May 15th concert. It provides the OCYSO musicians the uh, experience of being in that hall. It's a very different acoustic than what we're used to. I'm, I'm hopeful and confident that their experience in the hall uh, will make them feel a lot more relaxed when we're in front of uh, a big audience on May 15th. We're nearly now at 30 years of concerts for fifth graders. We do four shows double, so there's eight actual concerts a year. They're 45 minutes in length, and the kids are treated like rock stars. You know, it's really amazing seeing the reactions of all the little kids and how excited they are to see you, and they treat you like you're a celebrity. And it was pretty awesome because when I was in fifth grade, I went to the concert for fifth graders, and I remember looking down from the, from the balcony, and I was just like, wow, they're so old and they're so big and they're so good. I can never be that good. And now I'm in the orchestra, which is pretty awesome. I loved it. Like, it was my favorite. I think that it's going to be hard to top playing for the fifth graders to actually play at Seagersham on the 15th because when I was a kid, I loved looking up to older kids who did the same things that I loved and enjoyed doing it. So when I look up to them, I'm like, I want to be like them when I'm older. And because they did it, I can do it. So this is very good that they've played four times this season already in Seagersham before the May 15th. I think that will bring some comfort to it. Though the stage is entirely different, it'll be a whole nother setup, of, you, know, you know, three times the amount of people <laughs> up on stage with them. But I think that there is some sort of comfort now that they know, you know, they, just the, the small things, they know how to get backstage. They know how to, so some of those things can um, take off some of the stress. You know, it gives you this really nice feeling when you give that experience to 2,000 children at a time, you know, like 2,000 times 2 is uh, 4,000. Wow, my math's bad. So 4,000 and then times four center concerts, that's 16,000 kids. That's a lot. That's a lot. It's estimated that through these concerts, we have introduced classical music into the lives of well over 500,000 students. We're back from uh, spring break last week we were off, so we haven't even seen each other as a group since our last center concert. It feels like it's been forever, but I guess it's been a week and a half. Um, and first thing, one of the first people I saw was Sam out there, um, dressed as a pirate. And not far from what Sam would do, <laughs> um, but you have to ask. Um, and he is dressed as a pirate for the Renaissance Fair. Uh, this weekend is not the Renaissance Fair, it's next weekend. Renaissance Fair is next weekend and I'm pretty excited. Only problem is the hat kind of gets in the way sometimes, so you gotta try and position it right with the horn, but besides that, uh, I think it's an advantage. It gives me a uh, plus five to agility and uh, plus five to uh, power. We got characters in an orchestra, any orchestra, any group of people. A, a, an orchestra is comprised, made up a group of individuals. So there are 95 individuals in there. And the trick is how do we come together to form one cohesive working unit? I think that OCYSO is definitely a place where people kind of just express themselves and they don't really have to worry about people making fun of them or being a bully. The staff, I can tell you, cares deeply about the kids, um, about their well-being as individuals and personally. Otherwise, I wouldn't have them on my staff. OCYSO to me is, is greater than just a youth orchestra. When I was in high school, I joined OCYSO and I was a member of OCYSO for a few seasons. I went on tours with OCYSO, I participated in countless concerts, and through my time as an undergraduate student at Chapman University, I continued mentoring some of the young musicians in the orchestra. And over the course of time, OCYSO has been a, a very important part of my, of my musical training, and, and more importantly, importantly in making me the, the conductor and the educator that I am today. I, I feel uh, compelled to give back to OCYSO because of the great experiences that I had when I was a student. Music can be such a grounding force in lives and I just hope that um, they all get to always experience that and not get caught up in the responsibility and the requirements of what it takes um, to be in an orchestra like this. So they don't miss the human part of it. As we progress through the year and we get to spring, there, there are a number of things the students are worrying about. SATs, AP testing, uh, IB testing, just finals in school. The pressure put on high school students now to just succeed and get into the 
finest college they can is incredible. It's an incredible pressure. Oh, this past year has been really packed because I decided to take four AP classes this year because uh, last year I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to take all these AP classes and see how it works out. Bad decision. I mean, I have nine classes at school, four of which are music. Then I have my normal classes. I got my French for language. I got math and all the all that stuff. And I have work. And then after that, I have to like sleep and do homework and try to make time to hang out with my friends and my boyfriend. And it's like, you know, it, it's like hard to fit it all in. But I've been making it work all year, so it's going well right now. <laughs> Part of being involved with high school students is, well, part of their life is they're gonna push boundaries, whatever those boundaries are. And myself and Taryn and Danielle, as educators, it's our job to do a little bit of policing. Now, luckily, this is an honors organization, so the kids are, their behavior is pretty above par for the most part. But we do catch them reading a book, text messaging during rehearsal, uh, they're studying for an AP exam. We pretty much all text or go on Instagram <laughs> because we have bases, so we kind of hide behind it. I don't know if I was reading. Are you, you saw that? What? What? Okay, so uh, yeah, I was reading a book. Um, it's actually for school, so I was sort of multitasking during the uh, off time of rehearsal. We meet for three hours a week, and that they certainly could spend less time on social media or doing whatever other activities they're doing to, to be there and be present uh, for three hours to really work hard to contribute to the greater good. Today is kind of our final rehearsal to, to do anything with. Next week we'll be here and we'll be combined with the other orchestra and we'll have the choirs on site. We're at that last point where it's just we have time for run-throughs. The pressure for us right now is that on top of all of the artistic pressure that I have, um, making sure of course that we're sounding the best that we possibly can and our, our soloists and our guest artists and, and everything else, OCY Sub has sold out Sagerstrom Concert Hall. We're kind of scrambling right now. The stress is felt everywhere, but at the same time, um, we probably just need to calm down. Two weeks away, panic! Okay. It's getting pretty close, so I guess people are pretty stressed out. I got a haircut. Nice upper peripheral vision now. So I can actually look up at the conductor and see what he's doing. You know, that's always a plus. Use the rest as the stopping point. Okay? I mean, this today's a wake-up call, man. I mean, two weeks is going to be... It's gonna go by very fast. I mean, some of us don't practice enough. I mean, it's fine for one day, but you just gotta keep, keep on practicing. It's only two more weeks. I think we can do it. We just gotta get everyone on the wake up call. I think this is a good wake up call for everybody. Like, it's not 100% perfect. People are gonna finally decide to practice, but we're st I'm still waiting for the maestro meltdown. Hopefully it's gonna happen <laughs> sometime. People are kind of scrambling to, uh, maybe learn things that they had brushed under the rug, proverbially, uh, earlier. And there's kind of a crunch. Obviously, next Sunday is our last Sunday rehearsal. Needless to say, uh, it is beyond critical. I, I don't even have the words to articulate how important it is that 100% of you are here, uh, without any exception. Uh, sorry about AP tests, sorry about the time of year. I, there's just absolutely no way we can miss even one person. <coughs> it's our only chance to go through this with the combined orchestra prior to the dress rehearsal on the 14th. So I, I trust that you understand the importance of next Sunday's rehearsal. You know, as we're getting closer also to concert date, you know, tension is on me too. I guess this is a, a term that was coined by some of the students. It's kind of come up this year more. I, I guess a maestro meltdown is when um, Maestro Walks uh, is irritated about something in rehearsal or frustrated with uh, how something is going or uh, I guess isn't going. Make something happen or somebody's gonna die. And <laughs> so, yeah. I don't care what you play as long as there are two notes that are slurred and accented. Get it? One, Last two. year he had a big meltdown where he got really mad at us. I don't even know what it was for because Hans and I were goofing off in the back, of course, and he just not paying attention to us. He's screaming at someone. And it actually wasn't us, I'm pretty sure. Stares at you and you know you messed up. And, you know, I mean, that's not necessarily a meltdown, but, you know, that glare of death. 
His job is to really feel that intensity and that, that nervous energy because part of that can come out in performance and really help it shimmer and shine. So that's some of his stress. Danielle really starts to feel stress uh, around this time because she's managing personnel and attendance. She's after those guys. Taryn's just generally stressed all the time. But we, we get to these points and I, I try to be aware of what the staff needs. I could not be luckier with the staff that I have, um, with Taryn and with Jake and with Danielle and with the behind the scenes people that many people don't see, our setup crew, with, with Michael and with Jesse. And these are people who even the kids don't even have much interaction with. But my life is made exponentially easier and better by having people that I can trust, that I have to a certain extent have trained and can let go of the reins. I'm a triple A type personality in case you can't tell. And I mean, I, 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 everything has to be kind of perfect. But I have to tell you that when I have people like, like that I'm surrounded with, it, it makes my life much easier and I can concentrate really on what I'm supposed to concentrate on, which is the larger artistic vision, both for OCYSO and the, that daily thing that we need to get through that rehearsal. We, we have the opportunity to finally bring in the combined forces of our orchestras from the Chapman Orchestra and OCYSO joining forces together. The orchestra is so large that we actually can't even fit uh, for rehearsal in our normal rehearsal space. So we're actually rehearsing in a uh, the Interfaith Center on campus, which is an enormous space. Um, and that will be very exciting in itself when we're standing there tomorrow morning setting up all these chairs and finally seeing the sea of chairs and stands, what it's going to finally look like. OCYSO, welcome. We've made it. <laughs> last, last Sunday rehearsal. And uh, in, a, in a little while when we start the Beethoven, we'll of course be also joined by the Chapman Orchestra from the Conservatory of Music here. So we had everybody here in a big space, a different space, sounds different from where we're used to rehearsing. And they were able to put it together. There, I mean, there are still some spots, but now that we run it from beginning to end, I think that the students are starting to see how it, how it works and how it fits. I think it went really well. Um, it went certainly better than I think we could have hoped it to go. Um, it's a lot of, a lot of players. Um, it's a lot of musicians and an acoustic actually that's even that wet to keep things that together. Um, you know, people really pulled through. People did really well. It actually, it, it actually sounded like Beethoven 9. You know, we're going to be in completely different acoustics on Wednesday, so it's, this, this battle ain't over yet. Uh, but today, today so far so good. Now, 180 choir members in Memorial. I can't wait. <laughs> felt the earth shake um, on campus. It was not an earthquake. It was actually beta the nine over there. Putting this thing together in one rehearsal is uh, kind of maddening. It'll take them maybe a minute or two just to get my energy back up just from having done a four hour rehearsal with the orchestra, but probably you guys are going to be so perfect that we'll probably be, we'll be out of here. Pizza? <laughs> finished the double rehearsal with the orchestra earlier and we just finished with the combined choirs from UCI and Chapman. I just can't wait to get into the hall at Sagerstrom on, uh, on Wednesday night now and just, just put this whole thing together and see what it's going to be. It's going to be unbelievable. So today this is our first and last rehearsal in the actual hall. This is our final dress rehearsal before the big concert T minus. Ooh, you know, a little over 24 hours from now, we'll be in here actually doing the performance. One shot at the hall um, to put the whole thing together, including 180 choristers, four soloists, and a piano soloist on top of it. It's our one big moment. We have to get it right, because if we miss this here, it's over, and there's no other chance to really, oh, can we go back? It's really kind of stressful. We haven't rehearsed with the choir or the vocalists at all. So I think that the fourth movement for us we still don't even understand what's happening and where all these parts go and how it fits in and you know when you when do you hear these voices and when do you you know so I think the impact of that is going to change a lot because I think for the most part in the fourth movement the students forget that there's even this this choral part and, and solo part written because they don't hear it in rehearsal every week it's just it's just the orchestra they hear so I think that um, when we come together that'll be it an eye opener or an ear opener, hopefully, of wow, didn't realize this all went on. We want to express the emotions, like the strings are playing with the choir and we're playing together trying to show the same emotion. Towards the end, it's just like a finale that like, 
I love it so much. Like I hear everybody's part and then like the harmonies and then like just intense stuff. You know, the, the, the poetry, the words that go along with the ninth are, are very powerful. Um, you know, Freude and, and Brotherhood of Man. It talks about, um, it, it's not only the music itself that is so extraordinary, it, it is also the meaning behind the music. I was working with the choirs the other day and I said they were, at one point they said, you know, they're, they're singing happiness and freedom and, and, and uh, brotherhood. And I said, I said, I said, don't sing this. I said, express it. And I think that's the same thing for the kids. And I think the kids are taking this on, OCY. So don't, don't play it, express it. They'll have this all of their life for the rest of their life, the fact that they have played, whether or not they go on to be professional, professional musicians or not, that's, that's not the point. The point is that at this moment in their lives and as they grow up um, and in their maturity and their development as musicians and as human beings, they have played Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. You know, we've been so, on, on this mission and on a road and trying to work all these things and make everything perfect, there's nothing more that we can do. It's now something that they have to encounter with the music. What I hope the audience obviously takes away from it is that, first of all, I hope they take away the, the majesty of Beethoven's ninth. Fundamentally, this is about the music. This isn't about OCYSO. This isn't about a bunch of 150 kids coming together and playing. It's larger than all of us combined. It's a lot of mixed emotions. Like, if everyone liked it and everything goes well, it's gonna be a relief and it's gonna feel great and be like, I did that, I accomplished that, we've been looking forward to this. It just happened, it's over. And then you're gonna be sad because you're like, it's over. It, this is like, I mean, this is a whole entire year of preparation that we're just like, so to let that go and let it be, we're, <laughs> I'm sure we will be proud, we will be, <laughs> we will be excited, but I think that there will be a moment of we just don't know yet. <laughs> so the Beethoven Symphony, four excellent movements. The first, this nice sort of landscape, these open fifths, this wonderful sound. The second, very active big timpani solo, the third wonderful great fourth horn solo. But then you build, you build, and it culminates in this fourth movement. The choir comes in, the soloists come in. I don't want the audience leaving saying, wow, what a great performance by this group of young high school musicians. I want them leaving going, wow, what a wonderful musical opportunity I had to be a part of this great piece of music. That sense of just overwhelming music and, and the power of the music, I think is just something that I can't wait to see the faces of the people in the audience. I don't even know how to explain this, but there's like a feeling that you get when something so spectacular happens, especially with Beethoven's Ninth. I feel like it should really, I don't know how to even put it in words, but there's just feeling like, wow. It's, it's a spiritual experience. I know that sounds really weird, but it really is. It's like listening to, it's like worshiping. Kind of like a church service almost. You like get rid of all the bad stuff like that you had inside you before you, like all the bad stuff you had inside you on your way in and it's so close to the human soul that it's just, you know, it's the art of the soul, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, when we started this whole project nine months ago, I said, this is gonna be a journey. This is gonna be a journey, kind of, we're, we're scaling Mount, Mount Everest here in terms of Beethoven's monumental Ninth Symphony. And it has been a fascinating process for me, for me personally also. For me, who's not conducted Beethoven's Ninth before. I mean, yes, I've grown up with Beethoven Nine as well, we all have, but I've never conducted it. I've never been faced with it like I, I am now. It's, it's really been a journey. So, you know, come that, that evening, first of all, I hope that the audience accepts and likes, you know, the interpretation that we have come to as a group together. And, and uh, of course, I hope that they love it too. And I hope that I can walk away and walk off stage and go, Wow, we did it. We actually did it.
funding for this program made possible by 